Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be unboxing and setting up this 4 megapixel turret IP security camera. So I wanted to install this camera in my garage and I wanted something with good resolution and night vision. So this product is a DS2CD3345-I, the I stands for infrared, which is the night vision. These cameras are available for about 75 American or 100 Canadian. But be aware that this is a Chinese version and it cannot be upgraded. It even says right on the box, camera cannot be upgraded. I'm okay with this because I haven't had any problems with the Chinese versions of these cameras in the past. Whenever you buy products from the Chinese marketplace, be sure you get exactly what you've paid for. Read all the fine print, as some sellers are now putting disclaimers in their ads saying that the product you receive may not be exactly as described. This is a way that sellers can try to get away with selling you products that aren't exactly as expected. They may say you could get a Chinese version or a North American version. Most likely you get a Chinese version. So just keep an eye out for actually what uh, what's in the ad in the way of disclaimers. So let's have a look and see what's inside the box. So you have your coupler, you have some screws, drill template. This is a manual of some sort, don't really care about that. And then you have the camera itself. Seems to be reasonably well packaged inside of this uh, plastic and the camera is actually pretty heavy. I thought it would all be plastic, just the outer portion here is plastic. The inner portion right here is metal. It seems to be very tightly sealed, which is nice. There's obviously no AC adapter, but this camera uses PoE, power over ethernet. Check out my other videos for more information on that. And it runs seven watts and two amps. So again, this is a four mega, megapixel camera. It can be used outdoors. It's really good in cold weather. Uh, I never had any issues with any of the heat vision products before in cold weather. So this is not a automatic pan, tilt and zoom PTZ camera, uh, but you can obviously move it around by hand so that you get the correct angle that you want. It, it rotates on this axis and then it rotates on this axis. So it's just a matter of getting it into place and then pointing it in the right direction. There is no card slot to put a micro SD card. So if you want to be recording your footage, you have to do so on your computer or on a cloud. So before setting up this camera, let's just get it plugged into in my network and make sure it works correctly. And then we'll get it installed. Basically all I'm doing here is plugging the camera into my network. And then I have a two amp adapter and I'm just going to plug in some power and you should see the camera come on and that is the night vision right there the IR light and uh, let's uh, let's get this set up next I'm going to download Hikvision tools so that I can change the IP address so make sure you're downloading Hikvision tools and none of the other uh, applications I find that one works best so you need to accept the agreement and sign into your account once you sign in you can start the download and once the download is complete I like to run the application as administrator and go ahead and accept all of the default values. Now Hikvision Tools isn't a requirement. You can use Internet Explorer to navigate to the IP address listed on the product box. But I prefer to use that tool because I have so many cameras and it helps me keep them organized. Once Tools is loaded, click on SADP and find your camera. And then you can update your IP address, your port, and the default gateway. Once that's completed, enter your password to save your changes. Again, as you saw earlier, the password is written on the box. Next, we're going to go to Internet Explorer and put in the IP address which we specified earlier and then our credentials so that we can log in. Now, in order to make Live View work, you're going to need to install this ActiveX control.
you will have to log out and log back in again and then click on the allow button so that the, uh, you can access the uh, camera's feed. And here's a quick bit of footage from around the office to prove that the camera is working. So right here I'm going to update the ports. The HTTP port will be 99 and the RTSP 999 and the server port will be 9999. So when I save that, I will have to log back in again using the new port numbers. So next I want to record the continuous feed. So here in blue iris, I will go into my settings and on the, this page here, I'll have to update the IP address and I'll have to update the ports. And as you can see, those ports need to align in order to get the feed to come through. So I'll right click and I'll enable this camera and there we have it, the feed is coming through. So the next step is to get the camera taken apart so that we can access the screw holes on the back. So basically what you need to do is if everything rotates like this, we need to hold on to the external part and then rotate the inside and then it comes apart. So this piece here is the piece that needs to go attach to your ceiling through these drill holes right here. So uh, let's get that put into place. So I have my drop right here and I obviously can't put on this piece of weather ceiling because the uh, RJ45 connector is already on. So uh, since this is an indoor application, I'm not going to even worry about the coupler. I'm just going to, I'm just going to install it as is. So I'm just going to put that through the hole and then plug that in just so it's in place. And now I need to attach this. Now this is a standard light socket junction box and the holes do not align to the mounting plate on the camera. So to fix that you need one of these little brackets. So with that in place, you just need to find a couple holes that line up so that you can put the mounting bracket onto the ceiling. Okay, next step is to tuck the wires up inside. So now it's just a matter of uh, looking at the feed to see uh, the exact positioning of where you want your camera to point. So the camera has been installed. One note that I'd like to make is that a dome camera is definitely more secure than this turret camera. Somebody could come up and knock this uh, off, the, uh, off its foundation easier. A dome camera is much more flush and more durable. Someone could even come up and just easily turn this and uh, turn the point of view of the camera so that uh, it's no longer recording what you want to record. More difficult to do that with a dome type camera. Dome cameras are more expensive this is good for indoors in my opinion, such as a garage where you're going to capture anybody who's going to come in through those main entrances. So uh, I think this is going to be a good fit for this, uh, this case. So thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see what else I'm up to, please subscribe to my channel.